At this point, we should have VirtualBox installed. Eventually, we'll get to the point where uh, we'll be able to make the uh, virtual machine go full screen. So it will take up your desktop and it'll work. You won't even, uh, a person sitting down in front of the computer wouldn't necessarily know that it's a virtual machine because the monitor itself wouldn't have this window. Uh, we can kick it into full screen. Here's one trick by using right control F. So I'm gonna hit right control F and it's gonna prompt me. It's gonna say, do you wanna go into full screen? And um, uh, you'll be able to use right control F again to break out of it. I'll click switch and you can see in full screen mode right now, it really isn't full screen. Uh, we've got a large black border, so the live CD isn't necessarily detecting our full screen setup and giving us the best experience right now. I'm gonna hit right control F to break out of full screen. Let me demonstrate one thing quickly. I'll be able to pause the video as I restart to make it go a little faster here. I'm gonna right click on the desktop and I'm going to create a folder. And I'm going to call this my folder. Because this is a live CD, anything we do will not be saved. I find that uh, folks who are new to virtual machines sometimes will run into this. They'll do a lot of work on a live CD. They'll turn it off, and then it's all gone. One of the things you want to look for is this install Linux Mint icon. If you see that, that generally means you're working on a live CD, and your changes won't be saved. So by Creating this folder, I'm going to X this. I'm going to choose power off the machine. And then I'm going to restart it. Pause the video while I restart the machine. And you can see after a restart, that folder is gone. Again, this live CD does not have what we call persistence. So let's walk through the installation process first. So we have a system that's saving our changes and working like a computer should. I'm going to click Install Linux Mint. And let's take a look at the settings here. So we're going to choose our language English. One of the things I tell students in my classes, if you choose Russian, something along those lines, you are officially on your own at that point. So I'm going to choose English. I'll try to pause this if I sense a delay. Uh, again, our keyboard layout, English US, standard options here. Install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, flash, MP3, and other media. You can install this at any time very easily after the operating system has been deployed. Checking this box uh, just means you'll use a little extra bandwidth as it works through the installation. I tend to install the third-party software. Our next option is how do we want to install it? Now, if you were working with a live CD on a host computer and you had either Windows or Linux in front of you and you get to this installation type where it says something like erase disk, you want to think, do I really want to erase the disk? In this case, because we're working with a VDI, that's that dynamically allocated VDI, we can erase disk and install Mint and it's not going to do any damage. Something else is another option that we can explore later that will allow you to specifically partition the hard drive so that you can do things like dual boot your computer. But we're going to say, okay, erase everything, handle the partitions, and just install Mint. This will delete everything that's on the VDI that we created earlier. And again, it's going to warn us that uh, it will be partitioning the disk. In this case, it won't hurt our host operating system. It will be partitioning a virtual disk We'll be partitioning our Linux Mint Lesson VDI. I'm going to pause the video after this next step, I guess. Time zone, uh, wherever you're located. Now, because this is a virtual machine and it's for lesson purposes, I don't have anything sensitive on here. I'm not really concerned about it. 
I'm not going to go with a super secure setting. If I were doing this on a host operating system, again, you want to think security. So I'm going to make this username student, and I'm going to give it a password of student as well. And you can tell it to require a password when you log in, so it'll prompt you at the beginning and ask you for your password, much like Windows does, or you can tell it to log in automatically. I'm going to make my life a little easier with this virtual machine by giving it a super easy username and password. And I'm going to tell it to log in automatically because I'm not super concerned about security with this virtual machine. Okay, so now we're going to copy files and install, and it's going to work through an entire process here. I'm going to pause the video while it does that. So that takes a few minutes, but eventually we get to the point where it tells you the installation is complete. We can continue testing or restart now. I'm not going to click either one of those for this lesson. If we take a look in our Linux Mint Lesson 1 folder, we can see we have several files here, two very small files, three kilobytes. We have our VDI file, and I lied earlier, said it would only take three gigabytes of data. This operating system has been, uh, this disk has been expanded so that it now holds uh, six and a half gigabytes of data, which is our operating system. I'm gonna go ahead and instead of continuing testing or restarting now, that takes a step that's transparent that I find a lot of people miss. So I'm gonna click the X at this point. And I'm gonna tell it just to power off the machine. Because I wanna demonstrate how these VMs work. All right, let's see what happened. If I click settings on my virtual machine and I go to the storage option here, we can see that the Linux Mint ISO, that virtual CD-ROM we downloaded, is still in the CD-ROM drive. So the computer, when you turn it on, is going to go through a process of checking for operating systems. The default on these virtual box images is it will check the CD-ROM drive. If it finds an operating system, it will boot that. If it does not find an operating system, the boot order in the, op the CD-ROM, it will check the hard drive and see if there is an operating system. So if I try to start this now, it's going to look in the CD-ROM and it's going to boot the live CD again. And it'll never check our hard drive to find that installed version of Linux. So if it keeps booting a live CD, after you've done the installation, you want to go to storage and check to see, is my virtual CD-ROM still in the virtual CD-ROM drive? In this case, I want to click on this little disk over here, and I want to remove this disk from the virtual drive. So now our CD-ROM is empty, and the only place the virtual machine can check for an operating system is the VDI that virtual hard drive we created. Now, earlier, if I would have clicked Restart Now, it would have automatically ejected the CD and then restarted. But I find that the first time you're working with a virtual machine, if you don't actually see that it's important to eject the virtual CD-ROM, it can cause problems in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and start this machine. I'm going to pause it while it boots up. And we now have a full operating system. Uh, it brings up some help documentation at the beginning in a window. I'm just going to go ahead and X that out for now. But you can see that the desktop does not have the install Linux Mint CD-ROM icon. And that means that we have a persistent installation. So that's as far as I'm going to take it with this video. Um, I'll say one last thing. You can do the same thing with Windows. You can download an ISO file, walk through an installation process, and you'll have Windows here. If you do a Google for install Windows trial edition, it's uh, very simple to download a Windows ISO file and get a Windows operating system just like this. For some of the future lessons and tutorials, 
you'll see that I will use Linux virtual machines and I'll be using Windows virtual machines. Okay, thank you.